this time on Graveyard Cars. Will tries to prep and prime the 1970 Cuda 446 barrel while Mark micromanages. That looks good. Let's right. go head back to your office. No, let's go mix up some primer. Make sure you mix it right. Very crucial on this ratio. The convertible top installation for the 67 Hemi GTX has some last minute changes. Legendary couldn't make it due to scheduling conflicts and gave Larry a call and he, he's going to work on it right now. Very crucial that you have these set right because if you get it off, it'll break the window. After weeks of scheduling delays, the Winchester Gray 71 Cuda tribute car is finally out for delivery. Look at your 440, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing myself already driving it. With the ultra rare Hemi GTX convertible reveal getting closer, Dave and Alyssa work to complete the interior. Yeah, they knew how to build them back then. These things weigh a ton. You know what, the steering wheel made this one a little bit harder. I didn't think Did about it? that. And when Mark goes missing, Alyssa searches the shop and discovers something shocking. Why does my dad have this? All right, this got weird. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Alyssa and I are out in the body shop right now. We've got a little 67 Barracuda convertible that came to us a while back for a restoration. So I want to take a few minutes and just spend with her going over the car, documenting what's there like we do on all these cars. I got my notebook and I'm ready to go. All right. I think this is a good tutorial. There's not a lot of options on this car, but it, it's, again, it's more kind of just a quick history lesson for you and to get this stuff documented. And you need to touch bases with the owner and let them know where his car's at. They're getting ready to disassemble it. Always start out with your VIN number. It's not going to be up here in 67. It's going to be on the pillar, OK? OK. 68 was the first year they went from the A pillar up to the dash. So can you read it right there off of the, should be like a B, H. So B, H, 27, D, 7, 2, 2, 9, 9, yep. 0, 6, 7. First to tell you, I'm not that up on the older stuff, especially the A bodies. They're neat little cars, though. These little cars were the groundwork for the Cudas and the Challengers. These were go fast little cars in the day. They had certainly granny versions with the six cylinders and this was a 273 two barrel, but you could have got a 273 four barrel, which was the predecessor to the 340, which when you drove Bob Moore's 70 Cuda, that was a 340 car. Okay. So this is kind of like the predecessor to it. It's small, they had big engines in them. Some of them even uh, up to 383s in 1967. You could get a 383 in one of these. That's a big block engine. So you got the VIN. Uh, notice there that this is a power top car. P37, I believe, is the code. All right. The wheels that are on it are not factory, but those are ex those were cool wheels back in the day. That was the stuff. Those were keystones. Those were just a neat looking wheel. Overall, we know we're going to strip the body down to bare metal. Okay. Once we get it stripped down to bare metal, it'll come back. We'll clean up and recycle what we can on the interior. We'll take a look at the body and decide what panels need to be replaced. Definitely going to get a top on it. See this little fish right here? Yes. What kind of fish is that? A barracuda. Yeah. Anyway, he's already transplanted the 273 and put a 318 in it. This is the car that drove him around, the engine that drove him around for years, so he wants us to restore that. So just make a note that originally a 273, but now it's 318. Okay, so what was he doing with this car? Was it just sitting in his garage and yeah. he was restoring just, it when he had time? It was sitting in his garage forever and he, and he wanted to restore it sometime, but he never had the time. That's why he reached out to us. Okay, just wondering I why he has he, all these parts already. I think he took this car to college. Wow. He has college parking stickers on the back of it, so I think this one's been around for a long time. Something kind of cool. Yeah, that is There's cool. your Barracuda insignia again, and these hoods. Mm -hmm. They had this in 67, 68, kind of a neat looking little hood. You couldn't get a flat one without anything on it. Again, when you go back to 1967, we didn't have the Cuda that we know today, the 70 to 74. We didn't have the Challenger. These were the sporty cars. These were the cars that they were sticking bigger engines in and a smaller body and trying to compete with the Camaros and the Mustangs. So it's part of your heritage. It's part of the Americana. So this is, this is good stuff for you to know. Mark takes a moment to check in on Will. 
Will's getting ready to do an initial primer on our 1970 CUDA 446 barrel car. Having received an extensive amount of sheet metal and body work, this one of 902 1970 446 barrel four-speed CUDA is nearly ready for primer. You're awfully close to me there. I don't like that. I'm very, I have a little zone that I like to work in, a very tiny little zone. And, and, I, and I just don't like it when people well, what do you get want me to do? They told well, you to get close. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my God, what's wrong with your arm? This, what's this? Oh dear God. Is that mom? Yeah. You weren't in the military. I, Only guys in the military get to have mom on their, on their arm. Are you done? Isn't that a rule? You know? I was thinking about having these big old guns tattooed one day, but the guy was low on ink. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Point being, initial paint, initial primer going on the car. I'm gonna give it a quick sign off. Uh, you've got the primer. This is a new primer that we've been using for about a, a year now. It's from PPG. It, it's a direct to metal product and it has the ability to build like nothing you've ever seen. Uh, one of the things uh, in the past is when you have this much bare metal like this, you would have to etch it. You'd have to use an etching primer that has phosphoric acid in it to bite that metal <clears throat> and to treat any rust as it began. With the direct to metal primer that we're using now, we can just go directly over it and go over the metal, go over the filler, go over all that stuff and it's just one shot. So that's that's a really good thing. But the line's still there. He's got a good, his body man's got a good line through there. It looks like a fairly good line down there. It looks good. Let's go head back to your office. No, let's go mix up some primer. Make sure you mix it right. Very crucial on this ratio. All right. All Will has to do is mix up the primer and he's ready to start spraying. Again, love the new primer. It's so thick that you'll notice that when he's actually pouring it, it hardly comes out of the can and the hardener hardly comes out. It looks more like honey pouring out of there. I love that. That means there's no talcum powder in it. It's all material. That's the solids that are gonna go on that car that are gonna finish filling it up so that we can block it down to perfection. So yeah, I gave him green light go on it. So I got the whole car completely primered. I got four nice, even, heavy coats on there. So I will uh, pull it out of the booth, let it sit for about seven to 10 days, and then the body man will start blocking on it. God dang, you guys. It's not a big deal, right? No, it's not a big deal. It's my mom. What's wrong with having mom tattooed on you? You don't know either? No, I thought nothing either. I love my mother. So I'm sorry that offends you. Dave checks up on the convertible top installation for the 67 Hemi GTX. Unfortunately, legendary due to scheduling conflict, couldn't fly out here and do it, so we uh, gave Larry a call and he shot right down here and he's going to work on it right now. He's getting the pads on and pretty soon we'll have a top on there. After guiding Will on his primer mix, Mark returns to continue inspecting the A-body Barracuda with Alyssa. But there's the famous Chrysler Pentastar only on one side, not on both. Remember that, they don't put them on the left-hand side unless exports, because they drive on the other side of the car over in Europe. Oh, okay. So it's supposed to be on the curb side of the car, so the curb side of a car in Europe is the left-hand side. Why did they want it on the curb side? Because they thought that that, that why they didn't put two on is the amazing thing. They didn't want to spend the extra 10 cents, I guess. The curb side's the side that when you're walking down the road with oh, your you lady it. friend, you go, wow, that thing's sexy. It's on the curb side of it. You'd have to be in the middle of the street and be dead. Think okay, frogger. well, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think of everything. Just a couple things to show you. All convertibles have subframe connectors. That's what this is right here. Mm -hmm. Shows it was originally a convertible car. They have a right-hand version and a left-hand version that tie the front frame rails to the rockers. And then in the back, they do the same thing. They tie the rear frame rails to the rockers with these components right here. These are subframe connectors or torque boxes, you often hear me refer to them. Chrysler calls them subframe connectors. We in the aftermarket world out here, just out of slang, we'll call them torque boxes. But not a bad car, a little bit rusty. It's gonna have, you know, it's got some problems with the floors. You can see right there, that's the carpet showing up. Over here is pretty scaly. We won't know till it comes back from the dipper exactly how bad it is or how good it is. It was dual exhaust. I think he added that. I don't think this is factory. Yeah, it looks to me like somebody's added it. It's a cute little car, don't you think? I mean, it will be. Yeah. It will be. Yeah. I know right now it's a little edgy, but 
It'll it's, be cute. Yeah, it'll be a nice little car. It's just not, like I said, it's not one of the high dollar cars, but there's a lot of A-body fans out there, a lot of them, and this owner is one of them. So this car is green light to get disassembled. Uh, it'll be the next one that Mike does, and we'll get, like I say, ahead of time on the parts that are ordered because they are hard cars to find parts for. So, yep, we're green light go. Good job. Thank you. And we're out of here. And then one of the final things we put in is the well. We had talked yep. about that. Yes. And the well here uh, actually sit down in the bottom there, right? Yeah. yeah. Sit down into here, and then whenever that top folds down, that glass will set right down into this well. Yeah. And then and all, any debris or anything you got in your trunk, it'll keep your top clean. Yeah. Because this will kind of divide the trunk from the, yeah. the inside of the cab. And I see a lot of people sometimes, they, since they have this, they can push things underneath it. Oh, yeah. So when they let their top down, it'd be like having the, all this stuff in there. It'll break it. It just breaks the glass. You just don't want to never do that. Yeah. So that's a must. <laughs> Yeah, and I know there's a warning sticker that goes on these two that yeah. goes right on the header. It says, make sure there's no obstructions in the in trunk the, before yeah. you drop your top down. Yeah. So, well, it looks great as always, Larry. You do fantastic yeah. work. We're lucky to have you down here yeah. uh, helping well, us with these beautiful cars. I appreciate cars. the job. Uh -huh. And I like doing this. Yeah, that's I great. really like doing, I don't know what most upholstery guys do, but I like upholstery. It's, it's, I think it's just great. You get done with the job, you can be proud of your job. If you're not proud of your job, then you start over. <laughs> That's exactly. what I tell them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be great. I mean, we got the, the dashboard in. As soon as I get that convertible top on there, all the interior's ready to go in. We we're hoping the windshield's gonna be here before Larry was putting the top in, uh, but unfortunately, uh, they couldn't get the glass in time. Once that's in, the top's done. Just interior seats, everything, door panels, everything's ready to go, uh, and it'll go fast. So I learned a while ago that if I'm gonna ask my dad for help on anything, I should probably bring him something in return. And for him, that something is usually always coffee. So I'm looking for my dad right now because I need to get some information on some of our cars here. I'm trying to learn as much as I can about the cars, so anytime I have free time, I keep the files updated on the cars. Not here either. Where is he at? I always have a hard time finding my dad. It seems like I'm playing tag with him or when he's in one area of the shop, I'm looking in the opposite. So it's tough to find my dad. Everybody always has trouble finding my dad. What's happening? Oh my gosh, it's loud out here. Yeah, that's why I stay here. What do you want? Have you seen my dad? Have you checked his office where he writes checks all day? Yes. First not place, there? he's not there. Did you check the movie theater? Yeah, he's not there. Did you check the lunchroom? Yes, I checked all the obvious places. Did you look in the production room? I'll give that a try. Oh, not so obvious now, is it? Oh my gosh. How do you get out of here? Uh, you still push the button. Bye, friend. Hey, Aaron. Hello. What you up to? Uh, I'm working on an edit for episode two. Oh, nice. Yeah. Have you seen my dad by chance? Uh, no. Oh, wait, yes, he was up here. Uh, what did he do? He came back, he snagged one of our interns. He didn't say what he was doing, but he took off with him. And that was a while ago though, so. Okay, he did say that he left a couple hours ago with an intern. So I don't really know what that's about, but no one knows where my dad's at. All right, well, if you see him, tell him I'm looking for him. Okay. I'm looking for him for a little bit. We have an extra coffee, it's getting cold. I don't think I'm gonna be able to find him. That says dad on it. Yeah? Is that one of his Bondo latte things? Yeah, I made it for him originally. Ooh, so it's got the creepy dried up creamer. Yeah, the dry creamer. Old, loveliness. old person creamer. Yeah, I'm good. My dad puts an ungodly amount of powdered creamer in it. DL? Do you want to drink that? Do you want a coffee? Is that Bondo latte? It's gonna go to waste. It's a Bondo latte. No. Oh, what am I gonna... Yeah, the guys around the shop like to call it Bondo coffee because it has the same consistency as Bondo. Yeah, it's a lot of creamer, it's gross. Okay, guys, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so no answers. With the Hemi GTX convertible top complete, it's time to install the windshield.
Uh, the windshield in particular on the 67 GTX uh, convertible, uh, it has a windshield gasket. Uh, it's basically a rubber uh, surround that goes inside the channel around the windshield opening of the car. And then uh, there's inside that windshield gasket, uh, there's like a channel that the windshield actually sits inside of. And then there's like what they call lock strip. So once the windshield's in that channel, the edge of the rubber is like a lock strip snaps up underneath and locks the windshield like into place. So then whenever you're, all your moldings put on there, it actually sits over and helps hold that lock strip down uh, to keep your glass uh, from coming out. Got all the A-pillar moldings in, and what's really cool about this car in particular is uh, the A-pillar moldings are all stainless. So you got stainless steel around the entire uh, windshield opening of the car, so your top, sides, all the way around, and it just comes down, looks beautiful, it ties right into the dash. All the stainless on the dash, it looks, it looks fantastic. I love the 60s cars just uh, for that fact, because of all the, the chrome and the stainless uh, really makes the car. They did a great job. Uh, went really smooth, they were in and out, uh, seemed like a turnaround and they were done. Came out really nice, looks, looks beautiful. Will is working on the 1971 Dodge Challenger RT formal roof car and factory FJ6 Green Go. Got a lot of the pre-paint done already, and I'm just starting to work on the body itself right now. Double checking the gaps. Gaps are great, the lines are good. Down here, the, uh, the line was off a little bit. It is what it is, so we had the body man come through and just kind of clean up the style line a little bit, get it perfect to this one. So these two parts are done, uh, ready to be blocked down for final paint. And then right here, I've already started on the corner panel and the roof. This up here has already been blocked out. You can see it's all blocked out nice and even. No guide coat, no low spots, anything like that. So the only thing that's left is for me to block from here down on this side, then I'll jump over to the other side and start the process all over again. Uh, this car is looking great so far. We really haven't run into any troubles. It was a really nice, solid car to start with, so the process has been pretty quick up to this point. We're going to get the body blocked down, double check that our lines look good, tear the car apart completely, then I'll do the pre-paint on the rest of the body. So here's a problem I have. Here's a classic example. I primed this, I've dated it, and I've primed it. I've done my initial prime, and after your initial prime, the hoods pretty much should be ready for its pre-paint if it's done right. Because what has happened in this case is they have converted this re almost ready for paint hood to a workbench. So I'll come to get it, and there's all this shit on there. I'll blow it off, I'll go to block it. And there'll be little dings or something like that. I'll be like, oh. And they'll come up to me and they'll say, well, how'd you miss that? And I said, it's not my fault, it's, it's theirs. And here's why. I mean, I, mean, I have nuts and bolts, you know? on the hood, you know? Sandpaper, more nuts or bolts, all this stuff that should not be on this hood is here. So I'll block it, there'll be a couple dings, we'll have to address them and the body men will have no idea how they got there and then blame me for missing it when I did it. So, a little pet peeve of mine. I got 120 on here right now. And then from 120, I'll step it out to like 220 and then 320 for the final paint. But then as soon as I'm done painting it the next day, and we go right back to our body man that uses that as a workbench to do the assembly for the final paint on it. Meanwhile, Dave is working on the 1967 Hemi GTX convertible. Right now we're working on the rear door panels. Kind of unique because, I mean, you got to match up the body color with the interior. In this case, on the car, uh, the interior color and the body color are a little bit off. You know, obviously the body color is really shiny. Uh, interior color tends to take more of a matte, like a satin type of finish. You can see Will put a, you know, the, the die coat on it actually is what it's called. It goes into the plastic well, but this is basically our interior color which would be like for the center console, the dash, the steering column and everything. So this whole top half right here will be this really shiny body color like this. If I kind of set this door panel in where it's supposed to go here, so this will kind of slip in like this, like so. And then if you shut this door down, you can kind of see how you got this nice shiny paint here from the actual body color. And then it goes in and dulls down. You actually have another piece that goes across the back right here. It sits up above the back seat, and that's actually painted body color because it's metal. So I'll go ahead and take these panels here over to Will, and he'll go ahead and get them all uh, scuffed up, prepped up, and uh, get those painted body color, and then we'll be ready to put them in for good. Hey, what up, Will? What's up, buddy? Got your door panel for you. They all ready to go? Yeah, all ready to go. 
Okay, so right now I got the door panels for Torino's car. Uh, Dave brought these over. I'd already painted them once with the interior dye that we received, but apparently these go a two-tone, kind of like Goldberg's car. So I'm, real quickly, I'm just gonna mask off the texture spot right along this line and then mask from there down. So once they're all sanded down, we spray an adhesion promoter over them and then we seal them and then we just spray the color on it. It's just a single stage, so it's just kind of in and out and they're done that quickly. What I'm doing over the top is an actual base coat clear coat because it has to be the exact body color of the car. So from this line up, we'll all be shiny and that dark blue metallic. Uh, get them dry, then I'll give them back to Dave and he can go ahead and finish the interior on the car. Woohoo! David Ray? Yes, sir. Like I promised, uh -huh. I'll get these right back for you because I know you're yeah. trying to get stuff done. Very nice. Oh boy, those look beautiful. Look at I that. So. Huh? Oh, that's going to match nice. Is that going to look good? Oh, yeah, that looks awesome. Uh, it's real important to get these door panels back. Uh, we've been kind of going uh, back and forth with some folks that uh, specialize in this car uh, to get the right color combination match and everything. And so it looks great to have them back. They're all painted, they're done, uh, they're ready to be assembled. All I got to do is put the armrests on and uh, the actual lights that go in place of them, which are really cool because they they complement the, the center console. Cool. Yeah, Pretty very good. nice. Nice job. That looks awesome. All right, buddy. I'm going to yeah. get back to it. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Perfect. This is a 67 GTX uh, 426 Hemi four-speed convertible car. Uh, beautiful uh, daily driver for, our, for the owner you know, of this car here. So it was just uh, mainly a paint and body, not a complete restoration. Yeah, Larry just came and uh, finished the top up on the 67 GTX. Uh, looks amazing. Uh, the white top, bright white, just really sets the car off uh, with that really dark blue. Uh, looks amazing, looks awesome. That looks good, wow. Boy, that really pops. Had done that look sharp. Ooh, it needed it. Yeah, yeah, Larry just got her finished up, got it pulled tight, had to work those corners a couple times. I read yeah. somewhere online that these 67s are a bitch. Yeah. Because yeah. of the squared off corners in there. And he said he had a heck of a time, so he, he worked those corners, I don't know how many times, you know, before he got them right. But It looks good, though. It looks yeah. tight. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Have you actually gone through the... I know we did the uh, test on it before. Did you run it up and down at all? Or? No, just what Larry was doing with it. You know, he was just kind of cycling it up. He didn't fold it all the way down. You want to give her a shot? Or? Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah, no better time do than it. the present, huh? I'll do a rep. I like it. Well, so, pop that latch is there. it latched? Yeah. Look at all that chrome. God, that's that, nice. They were very proud of these cars. Man. Oh, yeah. The A pillars, everything. Yeah, this thing is just a mirror. Beautiful. You know? Wow. Which is surprising because you'd think with the sun coming through, Oh, it would just be nail it. <laughs> I know it, yeah. And that shiny hood, too. Yeah, this thing's just a mirror. Wow, it's looking great in here, though. We knew whenever we put the, the top frame and everything in uh, that it functioned properly. I adjusted it so it sets down on the windshield so it latches down and works properly. But the trick is, whenever you get the top put on, you know, Larry kind of cycles it here and there uh, while he installs the top, but he doesn't fully cycle it, you know, back and forth to make sure everything's going to work properly. So that's, that'll be our next step. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. What well, sounds good too, doesn't it? Yeah. What well, sounds great? Look at that! Wow. Huh? Boy, that worked great. That's nice. Yeah. That's a that's a good. Yeah, that's, that's a good fit. Just sometimes, right. Yeah. Sometimes you got to smash them down to get yeah. the tonneau cover on them. That looks really good. Yeah, if, if the top doesn't want to sit down right, uh, there could be comp complication. I mean, there's still adjustments that can be made. Uh, worst case scenario, we'll have to readjust the top frame a little bit. And sometimes that'll actually make the top uh, sag or else it'll actually be too tight. So then we might have to have Larry come in and kind of rework a corner. Well, that looks great. Yeah, let's pop it up and make sure it closes yeah. and I'll call him back and let him know everything. God, it's beautiful with that dash. It's just, oh, it is. Yeah, this thing's just all chrome. This is going to be a nice driver. Oh, it is. You dynamated it? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I got a dynamat. Just got to do the back door. Still kind of setting some glass, you know, and got all the rubber back in the top, so. You're, uh, awesome. you're doing a great job, man. Yeah, you can go on with whatever. I think you got quarter panels, trim panels and stuff to put in, so. Yep. Looks cool. great. Number one right there. Cool. Thanks, boss. Numero uno. Oh, you're welcome, buddy.
Good job. Yeah, I'm excited Mark liked it. It's always nice when the boss is happy and says you do a good job. It's always nice to hear. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I love the way it came out. Uh, Larry did a fantastic job like he always does. Behind me is the world famous Dukes of Hazzard General Lee, the 01. Everybody knows it. It's the most recognizable car in television history. This car holds the world's record for the longest and the highest of any jump of any General Lee in television or movie history. The owner has commissioned me to bring the car back to life to the way it was in the movie and a blend of the way that it was in the show and make the ultimate General Lee. In the interest of saving time, we've chose to go with what you see behind me, which is what we in the business call a front clip. This is the donor front clip. If this right now sitting the way it's sitting, we could put fenders on it, a hood on it, a front bumper or a grill and it would look from the front like it's a complete car. But this is the inner structure, the skeleton that we're gonna be grafting onto that car. But imagine you're gonna marry this windshield post with this windshield post and it's gonna be seamless. Therefore, it has to be stepped out. This will be cut down to here. Then it'll have an inner structure piece that steps up to here. Then another one that steps up to here. And when you're all done, you'll put an outer piece back on it, all from original Mopar sheet metal, either that pillar or this pillar. And you will have this grafted together with the front end. Something that would not be nearly as easy as I'm saying it is if we had to do it all on a frame rack. This is our frame jig. We built these for this very reason right here. With this frame jig, we don't have to measure things out like we used to. This front clip has holes in the front of it. They're gonna drop right on that peg. When they drop on that peg, we know that this car is the factory length. Get it? Because these back here, these frame rails, they're in those holes. The front's in those holes. You can't get it wrong. So where we're at right now is uh, the body man has already started cutting and trimming the front inner structure that you see here. He'll continue to cut and trim, but you can see all of his measurements are here. All of his marks are here. These would be areas where they're making the step. So you have it going from here to here to here. He'll get this whole piece ready to go on the car. Then he'll cut the car part off, get it all cleaned up and prepped to receive this, and the two can become one. So right now, uh, Will and George are getting ready to help me and Ryan lift the front section of our charger off. So far, he's cut down here at the rocker on the outer portion, the inner portion of the rocker back here, because remember, he has to step it. Uh, he's got one more cut on the A pillar. I'm gonna let him do that now. Then he'll cut this pillar over here and we'll be able to lift this thing off of there. So Ryan, your green light, go. Beautiful. Look at that. Where do we want to go? Away right There's here. a car behind you, bike carrier. Let's go back. Right here is fine. I'll drag Keep it out. Right? Crazy right. bike son of a bitch. Doing a good job, Georgie. You drilled out a lot of those spot welds, right? I am going to bless the union of this original 1970 Coronet front clip onto this 1969 Dodge Charger. Have you seen my dad? So I decided to go in his office and hopefully find the information by myself. is this? Ew. Instead, I find a jar with dead flies. Um, okay. A napkin. My favorite kind of shifter is a pistol grip. Drop a coin in the slot pool. <laughs> okay. And a gun. Do you guys know why he would have this? I mean, I probably shouldn't have touched that. I'm concerned about my dad. I don't know what he has going on, so I'm gonna go ask around. Maybe some of the guys in the shop know what's going on. Hopefully I'll get some answers. Why does my dad have this? All right, this got weird. I don't think I'll be going through his files anymore. That, I, 
no idea what that was. Oh my gosh. A few weeks ago, the ghouls finished body and paint restoration and transformation of the 1971 Winchester Gray Cuda tribute car. After several scheduling delays, the car is finally returning to the owner. I'm Adam Cobbs, and I have a 1971 Plymouth Barracuda. I uh, sent that in to Mark, wanted to have it fully restored from a uh, condition it was in, and really wanted to build a tribute car. I wanted to build a 446 pack. Wanted to see it come to life in a different form than how it started. This is this is just a really neat thing. It, it's fun to be part of. I want to see the look on his face. It's showing up today, and my wife and I are excited. Here it comes. <laughs> Man, I tell you, it's remarkable the type of work that Mark and his crew does. Uh, we're really impressed. I'm sure it's gonna look great in person. Mark's done a fantastic job, and I uh, can hardly wait to see the car. <laughs> look at that trailer. Yeah. Wow. Man, this neighborhood's gonna light up. Everyone's gonna see this, and my wife is, and I are gonna be very proud of this car. How excited are you right now? <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've waited scaled. so long for this. Yeah, me too. Hi. Hey, Mike. Why am I happy to see you? Uh, boy, am I happy to be here. <laughs> hey, my friend. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. I had seen season one of Graveyard Cars, really found it to be a nice Mopar-centered family show, and really the quality that I'd seen that uh, had gone into those made an impression on me. Um, by the time season two came around, I decided to send down the car as I felt that they were the right uh, crew to restore it. They have the talent, and Mark really has the know-how and the drive to make these cars perfect. It's a beautiful trailer, Mike. Oh, this thing is a lifesaver. <laughs> wow, look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that oh. beauty. Oh my. <laughs> now that is a car. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> look at your 440, that's so cool. <laughs> I mean, I hate to see these cars go. I mean, they're awesome to look at every day. Uh, when one goes, uh, another one comes in. So it's, it's always nice to see one go, because I'll have something else coming in, so. Perfect, straight. Yeah. This just turned out exactly how I envisioned it. Gosh darn, this car, <laughs> this turned out fantastic and it's right where I need it to be right now. And This is just a great moment. This is just one of many that we're gonna ship out this year and I'm excited to get it back to the guy. It turned out just, just like I'd hoped and really I'm seeing myself already driving it. Really. Me too. You'll let me drive it, won't you? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Good, <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to it. It's a great day. It's, uh, again, I just, uh, I never had seen it envisioned that it would get this far. And I'm really happy that it has, and I'm really impressed. I really am. And boy, it's just so gorgeous and really uh, ready to go. With the owner happy and another car completed, work continues in the shop. We're working on the 67 GTX Torino's convertible. Beautiful 426 Hemi four-speed car. I already started a little bit on the interior, got all the carpet installed, uh, all the holes put in, burn in, the carpet for all the seats and the seat belts. Uh, I actually put the rear door panels in this one. They were really difficult. There was so much paint on them. Uh, I went ahead and did them while I was in there because I had to adjust the glass, do final adjustment on the rear uh, quarter glass. Okay. So I got all those in, got it adjusted, and I actually put the back seat in. All we got to do is put in the front seats, the seat belts, and uh, the center console. Okay. So yeah, and you helped me so build So I've done all that stuff before. Exactly. So it's awesome that it, yeah. it's like review this time instead of learning something new. Exactly. Excited about that. Yeah, so it should be a slam dunk this time. A lot yeah. easier for us anyway. <laughs> and then we get to work on this beautiful car. This one we've been talking about, so. I know, this is one of my favorites. It's gonna be nice to have the interior in this one. Uh, but the seats, they look great. Mm -hmm. But you can see the backs here are pretty dirty. We'll have to clean them up. But what we'll try to do is we'll, we'll get all this dust cleaned off. We'll blow them off first. Uh, get them upside down and check all the tracks and stuff like that. Okay. But then we'll go ahead and clean up this chrome as, as good as we can. Oh, your seat looks beautiful. Did a great job. Mine's a little shinier, but that's okay. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll set this in like so. And you can see these things here are cool. They just snap right in there. So there's that. And then this will run up. You can kind of see where this these screws here go. Okay, so that one's lined up. And then if you look down in the hole, see where your slots are in there? Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go grab us some fasteners. If you wanna take the shift knob off. We're ready yep. to go. All right, so that's in there like so. But you can see it's nice and solid now. Yes. So that wiring will sit down like that. Looking good. So you don't know when it's out, how it's gonna look when it's in. How it's gonna so, lay. Exactly, it, yeah. so once you get it screwed down, like we're screwed down now and 
I got my razor blade, so I'll go ahead and cut that console there and get that in. But what I'll have you do is maybe get the retractors in. So when these here go in, you want this, see it's kind of a funky little deal, That's the retractors cool. in the middle. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So it just kind of rolls up and stuffs back in there. So these here bolt in, you can kind of see where I burn the holes through there. Mm -hmm. These will bolt in like that, okay? And what you want to do is you want it to lay like this. So this would be for this side. So whenever you pull it on it, the retractor's out like that, so it's nice and flat. Okay. All How right. do you want me to clean these? Like, just the same stuff I use for our seats? Yeah, I would just unwind just them and wipe cleaner. them. Yeah, and see how the, the strap actually looks. You can clean those, too. Will is ready to apply the pre-paint on the FJ6 Gringo 71 Challenger RT. This is our 1971 Challenger. Uh, it's in the booth ready for its pre-paint. It's going to the FJ6 uh, Green Go. Um, I have the pre-paint done on the doors, fenders, and hood, and the inside of the cab's already been jammed out. Once I get the body all pre-painted, uh, I'll have to flip it around and then do the engine compartment. And then once that dries, we'll hang all the sheet metal and it'll be ready for the final block and then paint. This car is going really quick. It's kind of like the Phantom. It was a clean car to start. So these two cars going back to back have been just kind of a breeze. It's nice to have cars that don't need all the metal work like the other ones have. So it is nice to have a couple cars come in, get them painted, and be able to get them right over to Dave. But now we're ready to go. So the paint's in there, car's in there, car has been wiped down, it's ready to spray. I love this color. I'm over plum crazy, I'm over the orange, so this is a new color for the shop, so it's always exciting to do a bright color that we haven't done yet. Owner's gonna be happy to see this car back together, even in its pre-paint stage. You know, when he wrecked the car and had a shop fix it back in the 80s, they painted it the wrong color. So us being able to put it back to the color it was supposed to is awesome. So when he sees this, he's gonna be super excited. The car came out perfect. The bodywork looks good. We blocked it down sharp. Lines look great. The paint laid out great. So this is just another one that's gonna be out the door here soon. Alyssa and Dave continue the interior installation on the 67 Hemi GTX convertible. As you can see now, our door works perfect. So it doesn't it's hang good. up, doesn't yeah. stick. So I got all that adjusted and got everything put back together and got all the screws in it. Okay. Ready to put in some seats. That sounds good. Ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to get okay. them in. All right. Well, Random we'll... question before we start. Um, I've noticed they don't have any cup holders. I know. So they don't have no. any in the car at all? No, not back in the day, oh. you know. Yeah, I think the big thing back in this this era was as long as it has ashtrays and a cigarette lighter. Okay. That's all you Priorities. need. Priorities. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, they knew how to build them back then. These things weigh a ton. They're heavy. You know, we had a little trouble getting the uh, passenger side in with the tracks were a little off. I think I got it. Let me yep. sneak in here. How'd you do? Did you get it? Yep. All right. Did you get all four of them in there? Um, just. Almost. Just the back one? Just the back. I kind of see where we're needing to go here. Huh. So close. Well, I'll keep fighting this one. I almost got it. Uh, did you want to put the driver's side in? Sure, I can get yeah. that started. That's okay, fine. cool. You know what? The steering wheel made this one a little bit harder. I didn't I think did about it. that. You need a hand with it? I almost got this one tightened down. Check this one. I think I'm good. All right. You about got it? Oh, there you go. Nice. Get it in there? Yeah, it's all cool. done. Oh, it looks Woo. great. Ooh, it's a workout. It's hot in here today. Yeah, I'm sweating. It is. Man, I feel accomplished yeah. getting that done. Yeah. That feels awesome. 
Now this is the best part, right? You get to sit in. Sit Look at that. It. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Ah, I wish we could take it on a drive. Good right? job. Get some air. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Yeah, but it looks awesome. We got to sit down in there and check out the vinyl. It's pretty comfy and yeah, it's nice. What an awesome car. These seats are comfy. I mean, shoot, for 49 years old. Yeah. Man, these are probably better than the couches yeah. I have at home. Yeah, this isn't honestly. bad. This is kind of nice. Yeah, now all I got to do is put the door panels on. That's real straightforward. I, I got a few little adjustments I want to do the glass and I'll do a final adjustment and hopefully that'll be it. It's just like it's just right. It's cool. Good job. Thank you. This was yeah. fun. Yeah. The installation of the Hemi GTX interior is nearly complete. It was important to the owner to retain as much of the original Survivor interior as possible to maintain an original equipment appearance. With the seats installed in our 67 Hemi GTX convertible, let's take a look at what else the ghouls have accomplished. Will completed the pre-paint on the 1971 Gringo Formal Back Roof Challenger RT. The Hemi GTX convertible top was installed and dialed into perfection. The Winchester Gray 1971 Cuda Tribute Car was delivered to a very happy owner. And the one out of 902 1970 446 barrel four-speed Cuda is primed and ready for blocking. But amidst the hustle, Alyssa still hasn't figured out what her father is up to. Hey, yeah, come in. Hey. Hey, how are you doing? Doing good, how are you? I'm doing all right. Long time no see. What's going on? So what's my dad up to? I think I know what my dad's up to. When I found the napkin with the lyrics on it, I mean, he doesn't write poetry and he can't sing. So putting two and two together, I think he might be writing a rap song. So Chris is our sound guy here. If he is making a rap song, that'd be who would be helping him. You have the equipment in here, so. Okay, I helped him with the song, but I did not do the video, okay? Video? There's a video? Well, you gotta show me the video. Oh my gosh. Really? Yes, Do you guys want me. anybody to see it? I don't care, I need to see this. What's he been wasting his time doing? Wasting his yes. time? He is being he creative, be... okay? Oh no, Very I creative. wish he wouldn't. No, no, you, you need to stop. People, people like to express art. Oh my God. Why? Was it good? No, it was terrible. Oh my God. What's wrong with me trying to express myself? Who's to paint me back in the corner and say I can't do something? We, we step out every single day. Every day you have the opportunity to make a choice as to what you want to do with your life. Can I rap? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of that, right? Can I, can I sing? Not my call. You've obviously seen I can dance. So why would my musicality and rhythm stop there? I don't like the rock, but I'm digging Steve Buscemi. A Ford's ain't my bag. I'd rather drive a Hemi. Rowing through the gears. Don't give me none your lip. My favorite kind of shifter is a pistol grip. Why live with crap when you could choose to rap? Wait for the dial tone. <laughs> oh, man. Your mom ain't double. 